Good evening to everyone and welcome to Bethel Youth Podcast. Today we have got our uncle uh, from Sri Lanka. We would like to introduce. Uncle, would you like to introduce by yourself for our viewers, please? Okay. Praise the Lord. I am Neville Jasundar and I live in Sri Lanka. The capital of Sri Lanka is Colombo. And I accepted the Lord Jesus when I was 19 years of age. And I began to read the Bible. And then I came out from my employment to serve the Lord when I was 23. Now, 40 years I, am, I have been serving the Lord. So, uh, you went through the youth days. Is there any difference between now and then? Things are changing in the world all the time. Yes, we could say certain things are the same. But certain things have changed. For example, can you give me one example? One example of change, uh, not changing, is God and His principles, which are found in the Word of God. But the fashions of the world have changed. All right, the fashion of the world and the world is changing, and we are now in the 21st century, correct? Yes, it is. So now I want to take you back to the youth. The first question is, as a Christian, uh, we are living in the worldly life as a male and female that is opposite sex. There will be attraction. As a young Christian, can a young man can love a woman or a girl and not do a physical relationship? Is that sin? Now that is a question which carries many variables because it is difficult to uh, answer that question um, to a greater degree of certainty because it's a very wide question, broad question. Because you mentioned many things like person is a Christian, person, person is a new Christian, person is a young person and, uh, and also attraction, love, uh, so many things were mentioned. Now, attraction to the opposite sex is very normal for a human being. God created us like that. But now, becoming a believer is being born again. And we are born again into the family of God by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5.17, that if any person is be in Christ, that person is a new creature altogether, new creation. So that means new means everything has become new. The principles by which that person lives have become new. What are those new principles? Now for everything, that person should go to the word of God and see what God has said about this situation. Now, let us take this one by one. Firstly, you said a Christian. Can a Christian be attracted to uh, the opposite sex? Yes, it is possible. It is possible now, but the question is whether it is wise or not to allow that situation. Certain things can happen, but th that doesn't mean they are always good and profitable and it brings blessing to the person concerned. Now, regarding marriage and union between man and wife, it is an important thing for the Christian to know the perfect will of God before you commit yourself to a person in a love relationship. So this is very important. Now, let me just quote from Colossians 1.9. Just only this middle part of that verse. And to de that uh, desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So we have to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. So let me just now, since this is not a time of Bible study, mm -hmm. just briefly say that we could advise, while it is quite possible for a young person to be attracted to the opposite sex, we'll give an advice like this. 
if you feel something like that is happening in your heart, you need to now be more worried about finding out God's will, whether it is the perfect will of God to be married to this person. Otherwise, what is the use of us, anyone, loving or being attracted to a person whom you are not going to marry at the end? And marriage should happen in the perfect will of God. So there are many things that should happen together. It is quite possible that you be attracted. What should you, why are you attracted to the person? That's my question. Why are you attracted? Is it because of the outward um, beauty? Or, or the, you think the person is handsome? Or do you think that the person is wealthy or wise? Or are you thinking that person is a godly person? Is that the reason? See, now, in our life, everything has changed now. Our parameters that we are looking at are different. So we would like to advise the young people, if you think that there is an attraction building up, you need to go to the Word of God, you need to go to the elders of the church and discuss that openly with them and discuss with the Lord about your attraction that you are having in your heart because any love relationship or attraction should culminate in marriage. If the marriage is to be established, it should be in the perfect will of God. It is not easy to find the will of God. So I would advise that if there is anything like that happening in your life, there are some young people, they, they are not really um, attracting uh, to attracted to any other person but wait until someone would bring a proposal so in culture to culture these things can change but if there is an attraction immediately the wisest thing to do is to bring it to the Lord and to the elders and and if possible if the parents are believers to the to the parents as well and not to go down that line um, keeping it a secret because it's quite dangerous. When you begin to hide something from others, that might open a door to sin. You see? Yeah. So because of that, we have to bring it to the knowledge of the Lord and the elders of the church and the parents and see whether this is from the Lord and whether it is the perfect will of God. It is quite dangerous for us to hide it from others and go forward and though we say there is no relationship finally it will lead to that young people cannot hold on for a long time so there are many dangers i think i'm not able to comprehensively answer this answer this question but i'm just saying that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will so such things are possible only when the person is spiritually strong. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. If the other person is, if either party is not spiritually strong, not properly grounded, they may not bother about this, and they may just want to go by the looks and and say, "I love you, you love me," <coughs> but that will not finally glorify God. And that's the main reason that the marriage broke up between the Christian. <coughs> is that true? Uh, that may be one of the reasons. There are many other reasons, mm. and. Um, but uh, uh, but somewhere down the line, if you have a heartache and, and you feel that you have done the wrong thing, uh, what, a, what a tragedy it is, you know? The rest of your life, you will be regretting, you see? So uh, my advice would be to take this very seriously. The attraction, always we ask, why? Why are you attracted? Is it because of this, uh, of this uh, uh, spiritual standard? Now, when I um, met my wife uh, long ago, you see, in the church, and I was definitely attracted as a young girl, the, not the looks of her, mm -hmm. but the spiritual character, the godliness that she, she, uh, she exhibited in the church. So, since I myself was a preacher of the word as a young man, I thought that my wife should be someone like that. So a thought like that is not bad. But when the time came, I shared that with the elders. 
and 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 my spiritual father uh, at that time i was 27 and uh, we just knelt down and prayed regarding the matter and while getting up he asked me the question neville how old are you now i said i'm thir- i'm 27 and he said okay you pray when you are 30 years of age we will talk about it you see i had 3 years to pray so i already had seen this girl and i was attracted no doubt because she was very godly she was godly than me i could see her behavior see that's what we could christians can look for so she is the backbone of you uncle. definitely definitely i cannot come anywhere near her in 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 commitment to the lord i have never seen a person who can pray like my wife you see at this very now we are both uh, uh, over 60 years of age but i can see her commitment to the lord the number of hours she is able to spend on her knees i mean that is the strength of my life so i would say young people choose wise wisely choose wisely so your advice is to uh, take the will of the god as well that's right. definitely that's uh, right. according to the scripture as well yeah there is no time for me to show you all the verses that god spoke to me from and i don't want to do it now okay we'll stop that now okay all right yeah and the, uh, for the final question regarding the baptism uh, the bible talks about the one baptism only so if a person came from the different denomination to the different denomination does he have to be baptized again what no, do you think now baptism does not depend on 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 denomination the baptism is for the repentant sinner repent and be baptized so the question comes at any time if a person from another church joins us yes our question is are you born again then that person has to answer that question and we will come to know whether that person is born again or not the way that person is behaving yeah. and then we ask the question after you since you believed were you baptized after you repented of your sins were you baptized in water immersion then if he, that person says yes then the matter is settled you see the matter is settled so, so there is no need for a second baptism yeah but no need i have given you the reason right yes yeah. because don't take it as a blanket Blank. statement mm. it is conditional if that person says oh yes i was baptized in that denomination but at that time i was not born again mm. then now you are born again you must be baptized you see so if you had repented of your sins and you have been baptized then that is complete there's no need of another baptism believe and be baptized repent and be baptized whether it is done by this brother that brother or that is not the question as long as you have truly repented of your sins and then you are truly born you are again born again and then you are baptized because in any group there can be doctrinal excesses doctrinal mistakes can be there that doesn't affect the baptism oh, right. okay. so so that, that, that's the thing so so baptism is for those who have repented and those who are repented accept the lord baptized by immersion that completes you see the thing yeah, has more to do yeah. and if they come thereafter come and join us having fi- found out uh, that that person has after repented that accepted the lord now it is over then the elders of the church must take a decision okay this person has already now been baptized so then we don't have to talk about it and then we must talk about the spiritual growth thereafter thank you bro- uh, thank you uncle for the having us with uh, two questions is there any main message you would like to pass to the youth question <laughs> to statement <laughs> or anything yeah. yes uh, thank you for inviting me to answer these questions and uh, of course we have been talking about the second coming of the lord jesus today waiting watching working just three words waiting watching working for the young people you wait for the coming of the lord jesus and you watch watching is that you may not fall into sin and then working work for the lord jesus serve him in your life thank okay. you thank you thank you uncle for the for the time uh, given to us precious time to us thank you <laughs>